here. Um, let me know if everything's okay, if my mic's working fine. Uh, we should be good. So let's see here. So what you're seeing on screen um, is mainly what I'm going to have walk be walking people through today of how to do the head like of like oh, okay. I, I'm going to give people a starting point to work with for the Loomis head. And if you want to continue what you're doing, then you will actually use Andrew Loomis. You will use um, the Proco videos about drawing the Loomis method. Which are on this is just for free on on the Proco YouTube page. He's got a lot of them actually, and, and a lot of demos of it that you can check out. Um, you'd be using photos. I've got actually a great artist, uh, one of the greatest portrait painters ever made, Hans Holbein, who we're going to be li doing live practice of breaking down his head angles into Loomis heads and stuff because they're very. It's very like even though these are like realistic heads and stuff, you can. I might get a better quality photo than that for that. Um, even though these are like realistic heads and stuff, like you can very clearly see where the head angles are if you really know where to look for them. You can see the side plane there, for example. Um, and so learning by observation and copy from master portrait painters is pretty essential to um, to understand the head drawing. So the reason why I'm focusing on head drawing is I'm going to have us working down the whole body piece by piece uh, each week. Uh, we'll mainly concentrate on the head for the next two weeks. I might make it three weeks if there's if there's some more advanced stuff I feel we can get into. Three to f or four weeks, honestly. Like we might focus on a sorrow heads or something, uh, which is like plainer sculptures of the face. But for the time being, I want people to mainly focus on like these kind of simplistic uh, uh, Loomis, they're called the Andrew Loomis heads. And uh, you can get his book, Public Domain, if you uh, look for it. Like, I think it's, uh, well, there's any, any, there's a, there's a um, site called Save Loomis. If you um, just search on Google, it's a site called Save Loomis, and uh, you can download like all the PDFs there, and they are all public domain PDFs. Uh, there's an Alex Hayes site and a site called SaveLumis.org that uh, has all that stuff. The main book that you'll be looking at is the Drawing the Head and Hands, which is actually more like a Drawing the Head book with an asterisk for and a few hands, because he doesn't go into huge detail on hands in that book. Um, uh, don't worry, though, we'll get to hands eventually. Uh, we will have a whole thing on hands. But... Um, also, figure drawing for all it's worth is a good one. Uh, but yeah, uh, those two in particular. Although, check them all out, because uh, successful drawing has some strategies for how to approach drawing, too. But yeah, once you get a hold of those, um, you can uh, start breaking out like the... Uh, let me see if I can find a page from... Here we go. Uh, yeah, this is... One of the pages, I believe, from his book. You can literally just copy these. Well, you walk through his his procedure, and you can also use the the procedure that I'm use that I'm using today, which has a few different things of how they drop the cheeks down. But you can use you can copy his procedure too. Um, there's some other stuff where he gets more into kind of the planes and the box forms of the face, but like stuff like this, he has a bunch of heads like from different angles done in that style throughout the book. These are pages from it, I believe. And here's one where he actually describes the method right here. So the basic method is we take a, we take a sphere that we figure out, that we actually work out like how these kind of ellipses measuring the point, showing the angle of it um, are through space. Then we chop the sides of it off like that. And then we, uh, st we start like dropping down and we figure out the top of it. We drop down to and measure like the thirds of the front of the face to find the length of the brow to the nose, length of the nose to the uh, next to the bottom of the nose to the chin, uh, length of the brow to the hairline. Um, finding the angle of the jaw, the bottom of the jaw. 
but yeah, where I'm mainly going to have us um, concentrating today will be on this. I'm going to switch it over to just my drawing stage right here. So um, yeah, let me get rid of that. Oh, yeah, this is some warm ups I did of kind of like making some kind of boxy forms on top of a skull. But you can do stuff like that too. Like you could, you should definitely go beyond what I'm doing here in the course of your week. But uh, I'm gonna walk through real quick the basic procedure of how to do these. One, one second. Gotta mute this thing right here. So, here. I'm gonna walk through a ba the basic procedure right here of the Loomis head now. So, uh, I'm gonna ghost over top of this real quick so I, so I have a guide to work with so I can walk through, use a different color line here. But the basic procedure is first, you establish a sphere. And I would suggest you draw along with me right now if you have your notes available. So you can write this down. So you draw a sphere like this. It's kind of a bad sphere, very lumpy sphere. I'll try to fix that. So you got a sphere and then like the next step is to like actually like, chop off the size of the sphere. For the purposes of this, we're not too worried about like the exact chopping off because normally like the ch the sides when they get chopped off like this kind of this side of the circle kind of changes. But for the purposes of memorizing this procedure, you don't have to be too concerned with that at this phase. There is a tool that I'll give you on Sketchfab that's like Loomis heads with the sides chopped off that will help you with that. But we'll get to that. So first off, you do this and then you make a smaller circle on like a kind of side plane that's sort of like the chopped off side of the big sphere you made. And it's actually happening on both sides like that. That's the side plane of the head. Then the next thing you do is you find a center line right here in this sphere. I in this circle within the head like that. And then you cut across like this, a halfway line right here. We're doing like a level eye line, three quarter view right here for this. So this, this is about halfway and you can kind of uh, eyeball it or use your fingers to measure. This is about halfway in the middle of that, of that inner, inner circle and about halfway roughly about halfway in the sphere is this line right here. This uh, represents the brow line and the top of the ear right here, not the eye line. So, and keep that in mind. So uh, the next step, say one, two, three, four, five, six. Next step is you find about like somewhere around the midpoint here of like the front of the plane of the face, which is right here. And you drop a line down like so. And then you curve that line up on the sphere to the, to the top of the head. You follow literally the, the curve of the, uh, the rest, the, that like a little bit kind of like that with that. Let's try to keep it plausible, basically. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something that feels dimensionally kind of right. Um, number, next step, number seven, is you take the side planes of this. I'm gonna start with this one that's visible because this one is behind the sphere here, but uh, this one that's visible, you take the side planes of the chopped off circle and you do kind of like this like slight S curve sort of thing, like where it's going from up here down to here and curves in like that. Loomis does a little bit more straight in his book, but um, this is another way of approaching it that can give you kind of more of 
indication of the actual kind of curve of the face towards the jaw. So like that. Now you could eyeball the bottom, you can kind of, kind of like judge the bottom of the chin, like what I'm doing here as the next step. But another way to do it is to measure it and maybe find jaw angle. And a good way to do that is, okay, first you drop down a little bit ways here from the, uh, from the half length line here. And you kind of like find the angle of, from the back of the skull and there's like kind of slight curve right here. And you kind of get a good angle for the jaw. And you can sort of find like roughly where it intersects here as the uh, side points of the jaw, basically. But if you want to be more accurate with that, you can use the measurement from the hairline. So there's one step that I did not include here, which can help you to, if you want to measure out the thirds of the face a little bit more accurately, which is you cut across about diagonally from here on this. Then you wrap this over the surface as if it's like a sphere because if like if this was a sphere it'd be going like this kind of you can even draw through that if you like like an ellipse that's cut that's in the middle of your um in the middle of your sphere that you drew for the head but roughly about here is where the brow these where the hairline is um, and you can use that as a measuring point to find the thirds of the face. So like so. So this is going to be probably a little off because I used a different approach, but we can adjust it. So that's one third. That's one third, that's one third, and it's measuring from the f out from the front of the face to these various um, measuring points in the face. So this is roughly about where the bottom of the nose is. This is roughly about where the chin is. This is roughly about where the brow line is right here. Um, now, a step that I'm not including for this is finding where the eye line is. But you can do that too. And the eye line is pretty easy. You just find the top and bottom of the head, like that. Then you find the halfway point here. That's the eye line. Like the eyes would probably be like about here-ish. But we're not gonna go too much into eyes right now. The main thing I want people to memorize today is this thing. The, whoops. We're gonna be drawing lots and lots of these from different angles, profiles, fronts, sides, three quarters up and down. I want people to walk through this procedure a lot and I wanted, want them to walk through this procedure a lot during this next week. Uh, we'll dip a little bit into other features and things like that today as like kind of a preview and little practice things. But this is the main thing I'm gonna have people doing. So this is the this is how to handle it when it's like a perfectly level like that. Um, it gets a little bit more tricky when you're doing it from different angles when it's like tilted up and down. And there's also different approaches to doing it from the front and side uh, the front end profile view. So we're gonna go into profile into front view next. And so front view, I already have an example of it here that I'm just gonna draw over. Front view, whoops, front view you start again with this kind of like, uh, with a sphere shape, like so. And then uh, you cut, and then of course you find your center line like that. And also you cut across, you cut across the center. 
Um, another thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be insta like you're going to be kind of like finding the rough side planes of the head to chop off, and you'd kind of bow them in like this kind of curve sort of effect slightly. Whoops. Want to kind of keep them pretty approximate to each other on either side. So maybe we draw across to make sure that you're getting the measurement pretty close. I'm not making this perfect, but this is the idea and you'd want to do it better than what I'm doing. Um, and then from there, you can kind of uh, sort of use a reference curve from the edges of here to kind of sort of feel out where the hair where the hairline is, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Generally speaking, the nose will be like slightly above the the nose line will be like slightly above the um, the bottom of the uh, sphere down here by a little ways, somewhere around here ish. So then, um, after you got something like this, the next step would be to, to uh, bring down the sides of the jaw, like so. Kind of doing this with like two lines a little bit. Like there's this that's like further back here and this is kind of like the cheek right here. And then like somewhere around here-ish, I think this is about, I think, this, uh, I think this angle of the jaw right here is about halfway. Yeah, it's about halfway here. So I had it a little bit off when I drew it originally. But you kind of play off the angles of the head a bit, like using these different th different shapes to relate to each other as you're going through it. And that's pretty close. I mean, that's pretty much it for that. You can even erase the sides here, too. Something like that. And you got a pretty plausible head. You could uh, this, these are curved in, but you can also do them straight like this for the purposes of learning, keeping the plane simple. So that's the front view, and now we got to do a profile view. And I've got a profile view, not on this page, I don't think. Hang on one second. There we go, here's a profile. This one's a little cockeyed though, I'm gonna have to maybe rotate it. find what layer it is. I have to do a little layer hunting right now. It's not, not terribly, oh, wrong thing. There it is, okay. Let's rotate a little bit more so it's a little bit more level. There we go. All right, so ghost that. I'll do a little draw over it. So same kind of thing, but now it's like happening in perfectly flat profile view. So you start with a sphere, oops. Maybe I want to zoom out so I can get a better circular motion going. Someone's hot miking. Yeah, my lips drawing. I'm gonna to need to be practicing a bunch of ellipses after we get done here. Like, let's try that a little bit actually.
I'm gonna maybe have people do that after we get done with this note section. We'll do a bunch of ellipses and squares and stuff or whatever, cylinders. Just kind of loosen up before we get to more studying. Uh, so, so we start with that sphere. Same old thing. Um, start with a smaller sphere inside the sphere, or, or a smaller circle inside the sphere, and that's the side plane of the sphere. From the Loomis head. My brother disconnected the internet. Okay. Then you cut across, of course, same procedure as it was. Since this is a perfect profile view, like this curve over the top right here is going to be kind of straight. But that's the peak of the head right there. Um, and then it's the same sort of thing. I mean, you can measure you can uh, measure down from the brow there you can find the hairline cutting across like diagonally you can maybe like slightly curve it here if you want and then when you have that you can just start measuring like that so now I know I now have one measuring section for the brow the brow to the hairline so i drop down and i measure that again for with my like thumb and forefinger on my screen for example measure that down again for the bottom of the jaw it's kind of a straight line going back there like that and then i can find then i use this to intersect with the curve of the back of the skull get the angle of the jaw and get kind of this little S curve thing going on here from the side plane of the head. And then I pretty much got it. Uh, the other stuff I added here was some optional stuff. This is carving into the skull a little bit right here to kind of create like this little kind of gap area that where like the spine is going to be inserted in there that you normally see on the side plane of skulls. I added a little bit of like the brow sticking out here and it added a kind of an indication of the nose here and something like the eyes there. That's optional stuff. But that's the basic structure of it from the side view. And then here are some examples over here of the head at unusual angles. And it starts getting a little bit more tricky. And I'll show a little bit how to handle that. You start using what your, your knowledge about 3D objects if you've drawn spheres and boxes and stuff in space to kind of plot around with it and like kind of maybe use the measuring tools but use them three-dimensionally if you notice I'm pulling this into a z-axis here so I can measure this like so now I've got that's a third right there so now I can measure a third here about and now I know where the bottom of the nose is The eye line would be about here-ish, I would say. Like something like this. Like that's the top. That's I think that's the top of the head right there. It's a little bit weird. But let's see here. This should be a little bit shorter. Something like this. So then rough halfway point of the island. Yeah, it's about there. You can kind of learn to eyeball it and figure it out too as you start to make it more intuitive. I think you should try to be a little bold about, about these. If you understand the procedure, um, after like drilling yourself on it, you can kind of, you can kind of use it to invent heads. Like I'm going to do one right now. That's the idea. I want people to like make this into second nature basically. I got this head that's kind of tilted forward a bit. So that means that this little crisscross pattern is going to be tilted. Because it's always going to be at a 90 degree angle when it tilts forward. That means that every, that means that everything else is going to be tilted in relation to that crisscross line there. 
but I basically just walk through the same procedure just at a different angle. And this is of course like the angles that these are following. If this was a straight line here, it'd be going like this, like kind of that little visor right there. But it's because it's having over the, cur the curve of a sphere, it's going like this. This is flat right here. So for this, I can use that diagonal trick. And this doesn't have to be perfect either. It just has to be kind of in the ballpark. And now I have my first third about, just about. I also know where the peak of the head is right there, because we're looking down on it. So that's my first third. And now I can measure that, just double that size again. About there is my nose. And about there is the bottom of my chin. So now that I know what the bottom chin is, I can do it at this angle right here. Because that's following the straight angle of this, see? And uh, yeah, then um, I literally will just do this. Come down from the sides of the face. Get my little chin in. I'm gonna keep the jaw pretty simple here without the part where it quite changes from this angle. And I'm gonna use the back of the head again to kind of find the angle of the jaw a bit. There's a little space here, I'd say. Where, here, let me look at my profile actually. No, no, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, this is a pretty plausible little Loomis head here. There's my nose. Oops. There's my nose. About there-ish. Maybe I want to adjust this a little bit. That bottom one's looking a little short. Hang on, I think I forgot to open my Twitch dashboard. Let me just double check that. Stream manager. Yeah, I gotta go back into the stream manager so I can check the feed. Let me see if anyone's posted any questions in chat real quick. Uh, also, if I could act have as people who would be willing to act as like pseudo teacher's assistants. If you notice any questions in the text chat that you can relay to me, I'd really appreciate it. Just let, me, let, just let me know who asked it and what they said. Or if you have any questions yourself, feel free to speak up. So I mean, this is pretty much the procedure. If you have any questions about this, we can, we can like get started. I can show you the reference that we're gonna be using and uh, I can actually give you the file that we're going to be using for the Hounds Holbein stuff, and we'll probably dig through some Loomis things to practice from. But yeah, like uh, I did a down tilt invented head there, just following the procedure. You can do the same thing with an up tilt, like I did here, for example, or that. Like this really weird angle. This one's kind of a bad drawing, but I, I tried for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the procedure. And this is what we're going to be doing this the rest of this session, just over and over again. And what I want people doing throughout the week. Here's a preview of what we're going to be doing next week. Um, we're going to be learning more about the skulls. If you notice, I started this with a Loomis with a Loomis head. But yeah. Um, so. How about we take a very short break, because we've been at this for our first productive half hour. I'll maybe leave some of these on the screen here, and uh, so people can refer to them. Let me see if I can organize these a little better so that you can see everything. 
Uh, and uh, people can refer to this for their notes or screenshot it if they uh, want to make sure they get it down. Let's get rid of that. Just organize this a little better so that everything's on screen. Gotta move this one. It's okay. We're on, we're basically on break right now, by the way, for the next five or ten minutes or so. And then we'll be back to drawing these from procedure and memory. And from observation from some of the examples I'm going to give. Um, I will say that uh, Sketchfab has a bunch of excellent drawing tools for getting better at doing this. I was able to, I was digging through some of them earlier. I'm going to put them on stream real quick. Let's see if I can find, oh, these are mainly anatomy ones. So let's see here, Loomis head. So I'll point you in the direction of the ones that would be good to learn from. I think that one might be good. That skeleton, that simplified skeleton. Uh, let's see. Sorry. You gotta kind of be careful with the with these because sometimes they might be warp, kind of warpy and wrong. Whoops. Even though these are charge charge models and stuff, you can you can still go to the you can still use them for free by like like the, it's it's money. It costs money to. Um, let's this head. Oh, yeah, it's a sorrow head. Sorry, it costs money to download them, but you can like spin them around and preview them and use them as artist reference tools. Like these are sorrow heads, or are, are, are what we're going to be studying a lot in a future week. And we're going to be committing the sorrow head to memory. If that sounds crazy, um, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. I mean, well, relatively speaking, once you get more into it. But if you have a foundation of memorizing the Loomis heads, something like this will be a lot easier to break down. But we're not going to be doing this next week necessarily. We're going to be doing mainly just skull drawings, and we'll have our own procedure for breaking down the skulls. Um, yeah, this is a good this is a good study aid for the skull right here planar, simple shapes of the skull, so you don't get caught up in detail. I would compare this almost to kind of the Asaro head. This is like a skull version of the Asaro head, sort of. So I'm going to hold on to this. This is a good, good ass study tool right here. Shapes of the human skull by, who is this by? By VAA. Very nice. There's another one that look, that's really nice. They got a, this is, this is a Loomis basic planes of the head on the side and this is an anatomical skull on the other side right here. This one's an ex this one looks like it'd be an excellent study tool. Here's the basic planes of a Loomis head. We'll also be using these in the future in conjunction with Zaro head stuff. So I mean like you can feel free to use these now. Uh, combine them with the Loomis heads that we're that we're using. Um, the more observation drawing you do the better. I'm not too sure about this one. Hmm. Actually, no, this one would be good. Yeah, this one, um, this one is basically the procedure I just showed you. You have a cheat sheet now that you can use with the head drawing foundation skull by, also by VAA. How about that? So, yeah, feel free to use this one. Just spin it from different angles, try different poses and stuff. Maybe if you have a photo reference, try to adjust it into the angle that the head is so you can understand what's going on at those head angles. I don't think I want to use this one. This one looks a little strange. 
Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to tell though. Oh, we already saw that one. Already saw that one. Hmm. I don't know about this one. This one looks a little smudgy, but it might work for studying. This is one of the main ones I wanted people to use for this. But my only problem with this is this does not have the, the sides of the cheek, but you can see where the jaw is dropping down on the other side, so you can kind of visually gauge where the other side plane of the head is. And the best thing about this is like you can, you have a cheat sheet for like how the side planes look when they when the sides of a sphere are chopped off at different angles. Like about here, somewhere about here is the angle that we were initially drawing stuff at. Like pretty much straight straight line right there. And like you got like the whole of the sphere and all you got is like this kind of side plane that's kind of cutting into it there. But if you notice it like it changes the shape of the sphere at certain weird irregular angles and stuff. So this is a good tool to figure that out. In fact, there is a, a lot of artists will often make like real life versions of this exact model and they'll like stick it on the end of a, end of a stick and check it from different angles and stuff. They'll like chop off the sides of a foam ball or a clay ball and make a little, sometimes they'll make a little like drop down wire thing like that. Or they won't, they'll just like make a little globe with the lines over it they need. Hmm, not too sure about this one. Yeah, this one's looking a little odd. Like I don't like how the I don't like how the side planes of the jaw kind of work. They look a little better if when you look at it from the profile, but uh, straight on, it's looking kind of weird. Yeah, so I don't think I would want to use this one. I don't really like this one either. This one's a little bit too stodgy, I think. Is this by the same guys who did the other one? No. Not too sure about this one either, but I do like that they included like the pre-chopped off parts of the sphere right here. So you might, so this might be handy just for that, but I don't like the way that the rhythms of the uh, sides of the face and the cheek to the jawline or handled on this one. It looks a little odd. This one it looks excellent. And we this one I definitely want to use for our skull practice in a future session. This one actually has like notations on it and stuff that you can click. I wonder if you can turn those off to get those out of the way. This is by Anatomy Next. But they color coded the different sections of bone that are fused together on the skull, which is really nice. Help you kind of wrap your head around the anatomy of the head. I'm gonna have to look through this one. The skull looks a little strange, but this one might have potential as reference for when we do, um, when we are figuring out the skeleton and the rib cage and the other things later. So hold on to that. Whoop. This one is just a random model. Eh, it's looking a little lumpy. I don't like this. Get rid of that. Uh, uh, this is too low poly, I think. Too stylized. Um, this is pretty. This one's good. I don't see anything that's really sticking out to me as wrong here. I think that one might be a good study. My only issue is that I can't, I don't think I can pan up and down on it to get like the site size I want. I have to figure out maybe the controls on this site or buy it. This skeleton looking like it might be kind of lumpy. This one has potential for muscle groups later. Let's wait for this to load. This one might be good. Oh yeah, I got a good sense of the tricep right here. 
the deltoid. That looks pretty, that just looks like it might be pretty good. It's a little stylized, but that's okay. Like, this kind of reminds me of Bern Hogarth drawings a bit. It's pretty nice, actually. It's a bit exaggerated and stylized, but that's good as a study tool. Don't know about this one. That last one was more medical. This one seems pretty good. I actually want to get a statue figure like this in the future to have by my desk so I can look at it. Yeah, anyway, so uh, this is what we're going to be do doing. Um, I kind of went over the break <laughs> going through that stuff, so I'm going to need maybe, a five, maybe five minutes here. But... You should be able to get started on this stuff. I'm gonna maybe put on some images of Andrew Loomis heads on my main TV monitor, so we can have my drawings and the ref and some reference to look at on the side. Yeah, this page of Loomis heads is pretty good. Let's move, scoot that over to my TV display here. It's plenty to draw and just just kind of dip your toes in it. We'll we'll be when I get back from the break, um here I'm gonna switch things so let's see what will work best. I think that might work best. Does that does that look pretty good to people? You can make out the Loomis heads and you can make out my drawings uh, to refer to. Yeah. Capspring asked if you could link the models. Yes, I can. Uh, I'll do that right now, actually, during the break here. But they're all in Sketchfab and you can kind of dig around for them. So I'm going to link maybe the ones that I think are useful. That that shapes of the human skull one. That one's a good one. I'm gonna link that first. So these are gonna be linked in the Discord. So that's the shapes of the human skull. Here is a the cutaway of the skull side plane one. Here is the planes of the these the Loomis planes of the head one. Here is the simplified. Uh, Loomis had procedure one that I thought was pretty all right. Um, and uh, here is the Loomis head ball with a little wire curving around it. And for the heck of it, here's the very anatomical reference skull with the color coding. I'm posting that in the right chat. Yeah, that's the classroom chat. Okay, good. I'm gonna link this anatomical, kind of exaggerated, stylized musculature guy that seems like it has good potential. And this muscle bone cutaway right here of the full figure. Uh, here's the Asaro head. It's not here, just like bookmark all this stuff. I think if you like actually sign into the site you can bookmark these or something for future reference or whatever. How do you build the shape? What do you mean? Uh, like, like it's a ball, but how much of the sides do you cut off? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, is it like an eighth of the size on? Yeah, I've been kind of eyeballing it. Actually, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, I think that, from what I can guesstimate. 
It's like um I want to say like a fourth of that section of the head, something like this here. Let's see here. So if we got like two sections of the head here and here, mm, it would probably be like, we have like something like fourths dividing up in here. So it'll probably be about here, the outer fourth. ish but really i mean like you should be able to just kind of eyeball it from the um because this is like not exact to nature it's just like a general measuring to measuring tool so you kind of just like uh, i'm sure that like loomis does list somewhere or in the other drawing procedural people list it somewhere where the exact measurements of how much you're supposed to chop off of the sides but we have a bunch of tools that you can literally just eyeball it from so just use those, and then you can kind of develop a sense of it, what looks right. That's the other thing about this. This is not necessarily going to be complete exact, completely exact. I mean, you should kind of cop. You should kind of like try to make it pretty close on. But stuff always varies in nature, and the general idea is to get the basic idea of the construction down. Um, yeah. I'm going to zoom out so people can see all this stuff again. Is that pretty good? I hope that's good. Yeah, what I got on the screen right now is plenty, is plenty good. I might actually have us like, I'll probably like, I might put on a sketch fab of the, um, of one of these things and then spin it around or something, but I think we I think it might be better if like you open those yourselves while we look at like actual heads and then maybe spin those in the direction of the head to kind of refer to while you're doing them. So let me see how big this file is if I can actually upload it or not. That's a big ass file. Oof. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna have people do, since I already collected a bunch of them, uh, during the break, in addition to maybe going over this stuff, look up Hans Holbein drawing. Look up drawings by Hans Holbein. Oh, uh, which is what we're mainly gonna be using for study fodder for the rest of this session. He's one of the greatest portrait artists that ever lived. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the head angles that he has in his pictures to kind of uh, kind of procedurally copy and learn from. He doesn't have a lot of really tricky angles. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, uh, to use him. So it's a good starting point for people to work from. Just make sure you use his better drawings and pe and not people that are like cop that are like copying them badly or not like his like super uh his super tiny drawings like this. I don't even know what this is. This might be some by somebody else. Like a copy by somebody else. Like right here, this head is actually looking up, up a little bit. You can see the bottom of the chin. But it doesn't have a lot of crazy angles. It's pretty, it's pretty, like, it's pretty cleanly handled. So grab a bunch of Hans Holbein stuff, Hans Holbein drawings, load them into your drawing app so you can start using them, and uh, we'll get started after this break. 
Okay, Google set timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. So I'm going to maybe have to look into stream vibes because so what's been happening lately is sometimes I've been playing a little bit of copyrighted music during the breaks um, with the idea with the intention being that I would just chop those out with the video when I upload it to YouTube but it's turning out to be a pain in the butt to do that even though it's handled automatically because I have to wait for the whole three hour video to process before I can trim out each individual part. So I'm probably going to, in the future, maybe use um, non-copyrighted stream vibes music. Let's take a look and see if there's anything. Actually, if anyone has any links to uh, non-copyrighted music I could play, uh, DM me in Discord. That'd really help me out. Sarah for What style of music are you going for? What? What style of music are you going for? Uh, chill, kind of. Maybe vapor wavy, kind of synth wavy sort of relaxing stuff that's good to work with. Non-copyrighted future funk would be nice. The, although well, that's kind of tricky because a lot of that stuff uses sampling. So, well, anything stuff that is non-copyrighted that doesn't use sampling that might trigger the uh, copyright bots would be helpful. But just DM me that stuff in, in Discord. Lord Logie also says, uh, are we going to review heads when they are turned away? For example, not staring towards the audience. Well, there's, um, that's a good question actually. I think we should maybe walk through one of those, possibly. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I was actually going to do the homework here live. Uh, and one of the pieces of homework here, which is like a five head poses. Um, okay, Google, stop. Okay, we're back from our break, so maybe I should get started on that, actually. Would pe are people fine with the Andrew Loomis heads up in the corner there? Uh, is this a good size for me to work at? Or should I go back to the uh, this larger size? I'll, I'll let the stream delay play. Is this better than the... Uh... Okay. Yeah, if you want the Loomis heads, you could uh, you can just use the Save Loomis site books and stuff. Cool. Now, I won't play any music now, but I want to kind of test drive music and uh, some of the copyright free music in the future. So just DM me that stuff and I'll be able to start using it, maybe even for our some of our sessions tonight. Tonight's head drawing workshop will be applying what we have studied here to um, head drawing session, timed head drawing poses. Alrighty, so. So I technically have already done part of the homework, I would say. I could maybe just adapt some of these that I've already done. Like some of what I've done here, but cleaner would basically be the homework. I, all I'm missing, I think, is the um, all I'm missing is the back view. But you know, it's an easy way to get a back view uh, of a three quarter view. Just get you just take a three quarter front view and you reverse it basically. So let's pick let's pick what one would be suitable best suitable for that. Let's maybe grab one of these or actually like here. I'll do a drawing on top of one of these. All right, so, I mean so same procedure. Just gotta remember that we're looking at it from the rear and not the front this time. So that means that we're gonna be finding the side plane on the opposite side, I believe. Actually, no, I think that would throw me off if I did that. All right, so we need to find the side plane here. So the head is facing that way, kind of. You can even draw through the form a little bit to kind of gauge where the stuff is. On the midpoint is somewhere about here-ish, I would say. So, drawing through the form a little bit to kind of figure out where the about where the chain is, somewhere there. Ish. I could be wrong. Anywhere over here. I can use the cheat sheet though, because back back of the head is pretty tricky. 
I'm going to jump into Sketchfab and see what that looks like, actually. Something like that. Just going to get the rounded sides. So now I got a cheat sheet I can work from, you see? thing, measure out the, actually I'm using this, aren't I? That means that this is a little bit off because my eye line is about there. Let's fix that a bit. You notice these, the, the jaw from the rear here is it kind of at different angles right here. And that becomes a little bit more apparent when you look at the, the cheat sheet from the, from the rear when you can see like the wireframe of the jaw like that. And I may want to fix this actually. So it's more like my original model. Yeah, I teach these, and these are basically like live practice, ses practice sessions for me. So I'm, you're gonna see me making mistakes and trying to fix them and correct them and walk through them. It's like, I'm not a competent instructor. I'm teaching these classes to literally like review notes I've taken from master instructors and stuff and convey them to you guys. I'd ideally want people in here to be taking a real drawing class and just using this as like a, like a I mean, some people can, this can be their first step to taking a real drawing class. Or they can use this as like kind of side, side training to combine with a real drawing instruction class as like kind of a extra dojo to practice in, basically. There we go. For the heck of it, I'm gonna shade the inside of this because this is like the inside of the jaw. Yeah, I mean, I basically got it right now. I can maybe even throw a little center line back here for reference. Like if I needed to insert the neck in the back of the skull or something. Yeah, that's basically the back of the head right there. Get the bottom of the jaw a little bit closer to what the model was like. Alrighty. That is a tricky head angle. Thank you for pointing that out. So now I've got like the starting point of my back head angle for this week's reference, and I can just rotate it if I need it to be like facing this way. In fact, I'll maybe do that real quick. Like, I don't have like necessarily what would be the perfect homework for this week from these, but I have enough here that is a good starting point for me. So maybe you like this one. I can at least demonstrate what the homework is, is supposed to be from this. a straight on one. I 
think I got all of it here. Yeah, just shrink it down and then I can adjust or do a better version of it. Just as long as I have a point of reference. And then I just need the profile. And this, yeah, let's see, what, I need five total. I need the profile and the back of the head. So I'll do the back of the head real quick before I forget. So, I mean, same deal. I'm gonna use my cheat sheet again real quick. But I mean, back of the head is basically like, it's the same thing going on. You just, you just wind up measuring the sides of the jaw as they would be going forward. And maybe some indication that it's going away from us. I think let me pull this over here to the side. Like I'm kind of drawing the interior here. Let's use like a little bit of darkening right here to indicate this is the inside of the jaw a little bit. And that's close enough. Um, but of course I would wanna do better versions of these that are more measured out and more consistent with each other for the, for the actual homework. Oops. I dragged my layer tool away. There we go. It's looking a little floppy, isn't it? So like when you do these, um, we do these, you can kind of like get started freehand like I did on them. But like when you do these live, you'd probably want to uh, use like horizontal lines to measure out areas of the face like this for an accurate 360 degree. You could even use like this to, after you've done like the freehand stuff. Then you just, then you just adjust and correct it and stuff like uh, um, what you decide which of the heads is going to be the model that you base all the other measurements off of. For example, like here would be where I would put the corner of the jaw on all of them. Uh, here would be where I put the bottom of the nose on all of them. So this is not going to be like a weird head angle 360 degree. This is going to be just a, a full turn around without too much in the way of like perspective warping things. Um, so kind of like, uh, you know, what, what I had like here, for example, in the original, here one sec. So what I had here, it was referenced from a 3D model. So that meant like the bottoms of the feet are kind of at strange angles and stuff like that. Um, we're probably gonna avoid doing that 
for ours. Uh, I want us to be. I want us to have it be more orthographic without that happening, it's because the um, other thing I want us to do as a cross training tool is this, and we need to have the figure well measured out for that. This is something that is going to be interconnected to the animation class I teach. Um, this one, this is a uh, by the masters of Ana by the the um, this is an exercise that the people who run the masters of anatomy site did that um, uses an Andrew Loomis body and then creates a character model and they created a character model based on it and then did a three hundred and sixty degree animated turn here as a, as a study and learning tool for themselves. That's what I want to work towards with doing this. Uh, of course, like. Uh, we might do more anatomical versions and stuff like this, like this one. Um, and more simple ones. Or something like that. Like this kind of stylized guy right here. But the first step would be to make a five pose turnaround of a figure. Get like male and female characters. Anyway, yeah. So that's what's, what we're going to be working for towards in the homework. Yeah, I just need my profile image here now. It's kind of a crappy profile. I'll probably do a better version, but I want to yoink this one for now. So I remember to, to add that one in. Now that I'm done yoinking everything, I'm gonna get back into drawing with y'all. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix and adjust these later, or do new versions of them or whatever. But yeah, so. Let's get started on the main practice we're gonna do for the next hour and hmm, hour and forty five minutes, I'm not sure. But we're gonna be keep going we're gonna keep going until about five thirty ish. So that means we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, a lot of drawing mileage on this. So I'm going to put up some reference on here with me drawing in the lower side here. So we're gonna start with some Hans Holbein. Uh, let me export from my pure ref file real quick so that I can have an array of images to go through. Holbein's. And I'm going to open the gesture drawing app that I'm going to make um, timed pictures of. I'm going to set it to 10 minutes per drawing first, just so we can just so we can go through this slow, and then I can like shift it through as we feel comfortable about moving on to the next one. So I'll move this over here, and we'll get started. So maybe not on this one. No, yeah. As long as the head angle is clear. So I need to set things up so that I can see the reference a little easier. Uh, maybe I'll use my iPad here and use the live stream itself.
Alrighty. Yeah, I literally am like holding this down, holding the iPad down below me to look at for the reference right now. So let's get drawing. Feel free to speak up with any questions you might have. Or read any questions that if anyone could read questions to me from the chat. The other thing is, is if you think you have a good handle on the procedure, you can kind of freehand it in a little bit and you can walk through the steps in different orders if you feel comfortable with it. And you don't have to be perfect with it. You just have to kind of remember it enough to use it as a tool of reference. What was the homework? The homework is going to be create five drawings of the Loomis head construction in the five positions I showed. Front, back, uh, side profile, three quarter front, three quarter rear. And you can use the cheat sheet to kind of construct them. But walk yourself through the construction of the heads stuff. So I kind of got like a good comfortable Loomis head going here. I'm going to maybe try to experiment with adding some of the other features on. To get a little preview of what we're going to be doing later. Um, so, sorry, how do you see the video? Huh? I'm new. How do you see the video? Can somebody link? Uh, we're, we're watching it on Twitch. Alright. So on my Twitch channel, if someone could link that in chat for me, I'd appreciate it. Or you can click you can click my profile. Just click Space Dad's profile and you can go to my Twitch page. Alright, thank you. The classroom chat. What's that? It's already linked in the classroom chat. Yeah. Or my profile. That also works. Alright, let's see here. I'm doing a little bit of like adding some of the brow. Let's see here some of the nose in. It's kind of like wedge shape that's gonna be, that we'll go over in the future for, whoops. That's not good. I'll have to fix that later. Yeah, I need to get, to, I need to buy a new hard drive, I think. I just got an indication that I have low disk space. So I, I know a little bit more about, I know quite a bit more about head drawing, but I'm going to be walking back up through the basic procedure with all of you here. Uh, so I'm going to try to try to jumpstart what I know about the head in little chunks, in addition to what I'm going to be doing here. See, the eye line would be about here-ish. I'm doing a little inventory of some of the later steps to doing these. adding this thing in here called the tooth cylinder kind of gives you a sense of like because like your teeth are kind of rounded inside your your teeth and your jaw are kind of rounded containing your teeth so you can kind of add a little cylinder in there to describe the inside of it of course I'm not probably doing it very right very correctly here <laughs> but that's okay I'm just kind of reminding myself of that kind of see what I remember from the last time we've been doing head drawing. Inserting some of what I know about the skull in here.
So we'll all be improving at art together. I'm I stink, and I'm trying to get not stinky at art by practice, by trying to explain stuff that I'm studying to all of you. My goal will be to eventually get into some formal figure drawing classes and other classes so that I can really kick my training up several notches. But I want this foundational, th I'm going to still keep doing these even when I do that. I can like use the, you guys will be all my secret weapon for. And we should all be each other's secret weapon for maintaining good study habits. Come in and vibe. Focus on something like this. Not try to take everything in at once. Just kind of take it slow. Memorize. Figure out the procedure. Figure out what we're going to focus on. Digest things bit by bit. You guys comfortable to move on to the next drawing? I think we're ready to move on. So this is pretty close to the same angle of the last one, so let's find a new one. That one's straight on. Let's do that. I will be a less stinky. But yeah, um, feel free to speak up. I think you should be able to talk without push to talk if you, as long as you have good mic etiquette. And that is not good mic etiquette. Definitely not good mic etiquette. How are your per uh, your circles so perfect? Practice. Also, I, uh, you want to practice ellipses several times, like, in fact, I was going to have you have people do that. Like, just, just start, like, you, you want to use your arm, not your wrist, and you want to kind of, like, like, do a circle pattern, uh, around before you, um, before you draw the circle. To kind of visualize it and stuff. You can do that for lines too. Like let's say I'm making a big curvy line right here. I need to like sweep several times and then go kind of visualize where the line's gonna be before putting it down. Like those curvy lines right there. This could be like a this could be like a forearm, for example. I'd just add like a little cube end on here for the front of the wrist. And then maybe like a curve part right here for the back of the arm, because Form kind of transitions from a cube wrist back to oh god. Can you please fix your fix your mic mic issue? It's a little disruptive. Whoever's knocking around right now. Ten. Uh, can you please fix your fix your mic issue? Put yourself in push to talk. Thank you. They left. All right, so. Something like that. But anyway, yeah, like I use this to kind of make kind of a so, sort of a forearm shape, I guess. But I mean, you can use that for anything. Like if you're trying to find the line of action on the figure, just draw do the line several times. Anyway, I gotta move back to my profile. Oh, my, my, my front view character. Okay, so using the procedure here, I drop the line down, I've got the sides like that. Um, I'm gonna kind of more refer to Hans Holbein's drawings and sort of freehand it a bit based on what I know from the procedure. These are going to be kind of following the procedure, but adding little bits and pieces using Hans Holbein to riff from. So let's see here. Brow line's about here-ish. 
eye line would be there ish. And for the heck of it, I'm going to skip ahead and do what I know about the proportions of the face, which is the spacing of the nose and the spacings of the sides of the eyes are all divided up into thirds like this. And if you want to find the corners of the mouth, the rough corners of the mouth when the mouth is at rest, you drop down from the centers of the eye like that. Oops, I kind of mismeasured a few things, didn't I? But that's okay, because I'm using this to learn. Maybe this could come up a little. The eye line. And then the top of the head is somewhere about there. Nose is about here. I think this kid has a pretty big nose. I might do some drawovers of some of other people's work to kind of show where they're kind of going off if people are post some of what they're doing in chat as we go through these. All right, so measure, measure, measure. I'm gonna drop it a little bit because I think his likeness is a little bit off from the exact measurements. of the thirds of the face. Sometimes you'll get that in people. These measurements don't actually exist in nature. They're just ways to get you into plausible ballpark of something that creates the illusion of a face. So his lips, the sides of his mouth would be a little bit closer in there. I'm just going to put like an indication of the lips. I'm not going to go too into detail on this. A little bit of the chin. Let's throw an indication of the ears in here too. And for the for practice and observation's sake, I'm gonna maybe pull back and include more of the head in. Just like the overall shape. Just for a quick thing. Of like the hair helmet that he's kinda of got going on there and the hat. The hat's kind of carving into the head a little bit like that. Here's pretty close to the skull at the top. Now it's coming out a little ways. It's coming around the ear. Something like that. Let's get a little hairy there. Pretty close to switching. I'm just getting some imperfect details in here just for 
observation practice sake. So you want to be a little flexible with your studies. Like when you do these on your own, you can maybe try putting in some of the features in them and stuff. It's, it's kind of get a feel for them. If you're some of the more advanced people here, you can definitely do that. But first things first, you want to concentrate on getting the procedure right. So pretty close to, that's another straight on. That one's a profile, so we'll do that one. And Hans Holbein is really good at capturing a lot of character in a profile view. And also another thing you can do if you're a little confused about how where to find these shapes and stuff, you can actually draw on top of a photo to try to find them. Alrighty, so this guy, part of his head is kind of covered up by that hat, but we won't let that confuse us because we know how to draw a sphere, don't we? What did I miss? Uh, uh, the whole procedure of how to draw Luma's head. But you can kind of watch this. I mean, there'll, there'll be a replay on Twitch later for this, and I'm going to try to post this to YouTube. I should be a little quicker about posting this to YouTube because there's no copyrighted stuff that I'm going to have to trim out for this. It's just like a ball with chunks cut off of it, and then you do the chin, right? Well, it's more than that, but I mean, you can find a guide of how to do it in the Andrew Loomis book, and also in the Proco videos okay. that uh, that show you how to do it. Just do, do a search for Proco Loomis head, and you'll find plenty of videos on it, on literally this procedure. Oh, it's different than the, uh, than the Loomis head? What? No, this is the Loomis head. Oh, then why did you say the Pro that? The Proco video is the Loomis head. It's Stan Proko oh. Pinko uh, showing how to do the Loomis head and how to use it from oh, different nice. angles and stuff. I would strongly recommend people, when you get done with this, maybe watch those videos and pause them and maybe copy from them and stuff. I guess okay. I'm just an idiot who can't hear. How don't, come don't, you don't, don't, be, the... don't be negative on yourself. Don't get into the habit of being negative on yourself. We make mistakes, come on. Um, I, how come you ignored the diagonal line like you just do a do a straight line instead of making it diagonal? Like for, for it's kind of diagonally up. On what? You see his head is kind of diagonally upwards, but you made it like a straight line instead. Why is that? For his head angle? No, no, because it's, um, oh, here, let me show you. I can get the photo. That might work. I have this stupid plastic skull. From Halloween that I forgot that I have. I don't know if those would be uh, those little plastic skulls tend to be really warpy, so I would avoid using those. You want to use something that's a little bit more anatomically sound. That's like actual artist tools and stuff. Yeah. Those things can actually cost pretty pretty a pretty penny though. Uh, not cheap. Probably like. Yeah, but when I get some more income, I actually want to get some of those myself. When I do get them, I'd be happy to photograph them from like tons of different angles for people. Which I'll probably do. Like I wanna get a, I wanna get a John Asaro head. That'd be so good. Put it on like a little tripod and like with some lights up. So uh this one. We are kind of it's this one is like it's kind of hard, to, a little hard to tell what angle the head is. We can kind of see about a little bit of the underside of the chin here, but he's like, he's more or less look, looking straight ahead. Um, let's 
see here. That is the brow line right there. So that's halfway across the circle. Then we get about this. This is like an approximation. It's a little hard to, to measure because his hat is covering up most of his head. It would help that if we could see his ear, but his hair is covering up his ear. So we kind of have to guesstimate. And that's going to happen a lot in your work and you'll, you'll get better at guesstimating by having like these tools and practicing them. So let's see here. So we are seeing a bit of the bottom of the chin. I'm going to just like drastically simplify this. So it's like a perfect on profile, basically. Got that S curve right there. I got that diagonal line for the brow, his hairline actually, excuse me, it's about there. Then I'm gonna actually reverse engineer this and make sure I got my proportions pretty in the ballpark here for finding the nose and the chin. So yeah, maybe erase a bit of that. Got some chin fat going on down there that's below the bone of the chin, in addition to seeing the underside of it. Let's maybe put a little indication of the nose in here. Kind of a rounded thing for the front of the tooth, the teeth cylinder area, the teeth bulge. Maybe a little bit for the chin. And then I'm just going to toss his ear in here because, like, you measure the ear, you can find the the height and the height. The everyone's ears varies, but like the basic idea for measuring where the ear is is like the bottom of the ear is roughly about on the measurement for the bottom of the nose. Top of the ear is roughly about the measurement from the bottom of the from the um, brow line. And for the heck of it, I'm going to toss the rest of his body in here because why not? A little top plane of the shoulders, a little bit, kind of this box shape here. It's not going to be very accurate. I'm just kind of throwing this in there for the heck of it. It's a little gesture drawing for the hand down there. Kind of a big black mass there, so I kind of have to guess where the stuff is. So I'm not going to bother too much with that right now. Let's so get another color and add his hair and his hat over the top. You could do something like this too, where you try to find the measurements of that Loomis head that's lurking underneath there. Then add the other stuff on top, kind of like this. And like little, I'm adding little simple indications of the features, like the bottom of the, the underside of the chin, top of the lip there. And these aren't perfect. These are kind of like little shorthand things for me to sneak a little bit of extra cross training in other stuff. We're going to get cover in more detail later. But one of the things I observed in doing this kind of draw over of the hat that he's wearing is if you look at the paint, if you look at the picture, you can kind of see where the hat kind of is being bulged a little bit by the, uh, the top of his skull versus this part, which has a lot of a forward gap and an air inside there at either end 
of the hat. So the hat is sitting on his head. And you can kind of feel out how the hat is sitting on his head. And his hair, it has dimensionality to it. Like I'm thinking about it in terms of being a volumetric shape, laying on him, him and like kind of going over this bit of the neck and the shoulder that's kind of pulling out towards us here. But that's like kind of stuff that you don't necessarily have to do for this. I'm doing it to kind of like test the waters a little bit. You can dip your toes in that kind of stuff. The main thing you want to do is this stuff. So we're going to move to the next drawing. That's a good one. It's another three quarter, but it's at a different angle. make a new layer here and I'm going to walk through the procedure I might walk through the procedure and then I might grab the image and do another draw over of it drawing over an old master's work is an excellent way to learn so I'm gonna not chop off the side. I'm not going to like warp the sphere when I chop the side off here. I'm going to use the straight on Loomis method. This is pretty close to straight on Loomis. I think you could argue that there is a bit of a head angle going on there, but it's close enough for the purposes of this study that I can just use the straight horizontal line here. Yeah, there is a little, little bit of perspective going on the eyes, and I'll get to that when I do a draw over. But for this, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to kind of riff on this to walk through my procedure to kind of reorient myself again. And that's the thing about procedure. It, like, I want you all to memorize this along with me because this will be something that should become second nature to all of us. Uh, we will always have this to fall back on if we get stuck on something. When we get a tricky head angle, we can use these tools like these to work stuff out or simplify things. Like if you get a model that's a little ambiguous, kind of like this, you can maybe just draw the simplified version, like I am right now, just to start. And then you adjust it. Like I could take this and I could adjust it, make it more like the, uh, the model up top. So for f the heck of it, I'm going to lower the opacity on this and maybe try adding in some more features. Here, let me measure out actually where the um, where to place stuff first. So I might have made that chain a little short. Yeah, I made that chain a little short. There we go. Are you guys enjoying this? Is anyone lost or have any questions or? Oof. I think there might be a little something weird going on here. Let's see here. Maybe shorten this a bit. Let's get those proportions right. This guy, I think, has a shorter chin, but I just want to walk through the procedure of the proportions. And erase some of this so this is less ambiguous. There we go. Yeah, draw lots of heads, draw lots more heads, draw heads every day. That's the other thing. I want everyone to be practicing this procedure every day. I need you to memorize this. It's very important that you memorize this procedure between now and next week. 
use as many study tools available as you can. Get feedback from other people in the Discord. I'll try to give feedback where, where and when I'm available to do so. If I see opportunity to do so. But keep in mind, I'm going to be pretty busy. So I might not be able to get to people's homework. But uh, the main homework is get those five poses into the full turnaround of the head and do lots of other head drawing, like copies of heads, following the procedure over and over again. I want page after page of, of like heads from different angles and stuff using this technique. You can use the Sketchfab tools, you can use photographs, anything. Try to draw from try to walk through the procedure from memory to construct your own heads. Alright, so let's see if I can maybe throw some of his features on this. First things first, the key to a good likeness is to get the hair shape, or if they're wearing a hat, the hat also. I'm not expecting this to be anything remotely close to perfect, of course. I'm doing this for practice. So I'm doing this as an optional thing on top of that Loomis head I just did. It's kind of feeling out the head a bit. It's hard to see it on the little iPad I have actually. So I'm just kind of kind of guesstimate. So I know that's a hat up there. I'll just kind of get like the indication of it, the outside of it a bit. Something like this ish, I guess. And then, maybe I'll make another layer just so I can keep those separate. I can lower this opacity a bit. And I want to start measuring out. Actually, I want to use red for that. Start measuring out the curve of the brow, a little bit of the wedge between there. Nose is something like that ish. Cheekbones a little bit more like this. Let's get some more flesh on the face a bit. Chin something like that. The bulge of the mouth there, the kind of rounded. Size of the nose, the front of the nose kind of pointing out a bit. Oh, I didn't measure my eye line, that was dumb. I should have done that sooner. So it's about here. And kind of get the eyes. as they rest inside the head. The brow kind of sticks out a little there and there a bit. Based on what I know about the skull. Zygomatic arch right here. The cheek. And I'll get the indication of his ears in there, even though we can't see them. Because I can use that as a measuring device. This is inherently going to look more like the generic Loomis head than his actual likeness, but that's okay because if I really would want to fix this, I could like adjust it to more suit his likeness. And this is like a this is a study and a, would potentially be kind of a starting point if I was trying to go for a likeness. And I can find out from doing the plain Loomis head, how his head differs from uh, from that. 
So let's maybe get like a little bit of the top of the lip here. Curve that over here so I can get some of the expression of the mouth in before time changes. Maybe like the upper lips of the eyes a little bit here. Don't have to go too detailed with it because this is just like a quick 10 minute study. Like he has more of a, he has a bigger jaw and I would like kind of shave off bits and pieces of this as I go. Kind of, it's kind of a bigger jaw than in the reference image from what I drew. So I would adjust that as I go. But that's a successful little study. So this guy's got a head that's kind of, this new one that switched over has kind of a head that looks a little bit like his eye line. The top of the head is a little smaller than his the halfway point of the head, which might actually happen have happened on him, but I think that there's a little bit of warping going on that one, so we'll skip that. Uh, yeah, that's a good profile pick. Look, we could probably do that, but I'm going to skip through some of these to see what else they have for us? This one's an excellent one. I think we should do this one. Just not next. Because we just did kind of a three quarter one just now. So I'll, it's cycling back through them. So I'm just gonna Let's do like, I kind of want to do this one. I got a question. Yeah. Um, so when you drew the eye, you drew like a downwards um, line. Is that because you didn't have enough spacing to draw the other details on the eye? Like, let's say old marks, like. What eye? What? Uh, which drawing are you talking about? The other one with the hat. The, the the profile one or what yeah so the, the profile, profile the profile one or the straight on one the profile one wait for the eye um yeah uh check the twitch uh let me know which of the images this is the one that i'm so i'm zoomed in on that's uh here okay. it, it should be on the twitch very shortly is it the one that I'm zoomed in on now on the Twitch? Uh, no, that's one. What? No, that's not it. Okay, so that's not the profile view. Is it the straight on one? Yeah. Okay, what I, uh, you mean those little drop down lines I did? Go to the right. Hold up, it's it's gonna move over in a sec. I don't know how long this delay is. Is All it right. this? Is it this one that uh, it's on on Twitch at the moment? Um, it's delayed a bit. Give me, give it a second. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay, those little lines. Uh, that you can find the general corners of the mouth. This kid was at this kid's mouth is a little smaller than the measured corners of the mouth, and also, mouth can change expressions and stuff depending on um. What a person is doing, but like generally, generally speaking, if you want to like kind of find a, a gauging point. Or where the sides of the mouth are, you can drop some lines down from a rough, roughly about the center of the eyeball to the sides of the mouth, and you'll find the end. You'll find like a, a general measurement for the endpoints of the corners of the mouth. That's all that all right. was. Thank you. Yeah, but that stuff we're going to get more into when we get more into features and things later. So I'm going to be doing another one of these. Profile view picks. So this one, this guy has kind of a sloping forehead, but don't let that don't let that stop you from drawing a ordinary Loomis head. So I want you to just use these angles to kind of riff from. I would actually say maybe his his angle is not perfectly profile, so maybe I'm going to go for that a little bit. In this one, so that means I'll curve a little bit 
here. Like the ellipse right there. And then I'll move the circle slightly to the right here. Then draw my, whoops, just to make sure that that's working. Circle's looking a little lumpy. I want to erase some of that actually. So I'm trying this for an experiment to see how this might turn out. So I'm shifting that over to the right. I'll keep, I decided I'm going to keep his level about the same, but I'm going to maybe, actually no, I should do this. I'll wrap it over this way as if like the opposite side on this is going to be like slightly down. So his like one side of the face is like lift is tilted upwards towards us very slightly. So this is going to be an experiment that might go horribly haywire. Just want to see if I can mess with a subtle angle tilt on this. This is going to wrap over the head a little bit more. And the good part is that I have these measurements to work from a bit to find these landmarks when they would tilt. So that may not be how he's actually tilting in this, but I'm just going to use, I'm just going to riff and use this. I might do a draw over of him after this to kind of try to figure out what I think I'm seeing in his picture that I'm kind of riffing on here for this Loomis head. include his neck back here. Just an indication of it, that's all I need. It's kind of this cylinder. Two gesture lines. Maybe uh, where are you seeing the angle? How of, can of you what? know how can you know if there is an angle it's uh, because I can I also, well because like the brow is a little, uh, like the brow looks like it's tilted on the opposite side to, away from us a little bit it looks like that there's a slight up tilt to his head towards us like very slight but that might not be the case so I'm gonna be doing a draw over of it to see if that's what if what I think is going on is going on in it I'm guesstimating I'm trying to use my judgment and you should be exercising your judgment uh, when you're drawing from observation, whether it be people in real life or from master copies, like master studies like this. So let's see how much I got wrong or how close I was to whatever Hans was trying to go for. I might be way off, but that's the point of doing these, so you can kind of exercise your your visual judgment. So let's see here. Let's maybe put transparency on that. And then beef that up until I get close to the skull size I need. Something like that. So the angle's a little strange, but I can tilt I can rotate this a bit to kind of fix that. Yeah, actually it is pretty close to what I had in mind. Yeah. See? I had to rotate it to make it work, but that's not too off. Um, that's his brow line right there. That's his eye line down there. See, look, uh, I'll do a little draw over to show you what I mean. It's ma it's like magic when you start like being able to see it and to see this stuff. So. Um, 
Yeah, so like, but what I was seeing was this right here. And the reason I was seeing that was because this was down here, and this was up here, see? So that helped me able to find, that, that was, that's the brow line. So that made me think that, hmm, maybe there's, maybe the head's tilted slightly more towards us than perfectly profile. And maybe one side of the head is tilted very up very slightly towards us, like just very, very slightly. Um, and it's not perfect. Like uh, there's stuff that's a little bit off here. There's, I think this drawing by hounds is also not perfect either. Like, because it is just a sketch that he did here too. So, um, but I mean like, I got it somewhere in the ballpark. And that's that's good enough. So maybe I'll just add some more stuff over here to kind of cheat the likeness a little bit by drawing over. So I get kind of the indication of the eyeball right here. Find the rest of it inside the skull there. See, I get the top of the eyelid curving over there, curving over the eyeball. And under it. So the rough hairline is actually more probably about here-ish. And this is going down a little bit further than the hairline would normally be measured at. So I'm just doing kind of a, a ellipse shape in here to kind of feel out the volume of the neck a little bit and the drawing just switched but I'm going to keep drawing over this while you guys work on the next one yeah the hair is going down a little bit further than the actual hairline, which is fine. And the hair, the hat is a little kind of, the hat, the hat that he drew is kind of like crude and not as worked out. This was a sketch by him after all. So I'm gonna kind of just sort of feel it out a little bit more than he did, just slightly. Yeah, I wouldn't get too far into features though, unless you know what you're doing with feature construction though. Other, uh, aside from that, it's a okay to it's okay to kind of trace over them and try to break them into basic shapes. But uh, if you don't know what you're doing when you don't know what to look for with breaking down features into basic shapes, then you really need to have a drawing manual that does help you with that handy, so you can refer to it. Otherwise, you're going to be very lost with knowing what to look for when you are trying to do the features. And also fe doing the features is kind of jumping ahead. I want people to concentrate on memorizing and doing the procedure for the head. And I want them doing it so much that they kind of like, I want it to feel three dimensional when I'm looking at it. I don't want it to feel like a flat thing. I want it to feel like a three dimensional object when I'm looking at it. So a lot of people who are new to this are going to have a rough time kind of feeling out how to draw things three dimensionally. And that just that's just going to take observation and practice and kind of trial and error with learning how things feel 3D. And one of the things that will help newbies with that is the draw box site. It has procedural lessons you can do that will help you develop a sense of spatial awareness about three dimensions. Kind of just doing a quick just kind of scuffy head here. Just trying to see if I can do this freehand. I 
I'm gonna leave that there because I'm getting a little visually confused there. I might want to try that angle again later. Yeah, I want people to, to concentrate on the Loomis head uh, and start think and not not try, don't don't like don't copy it two dimensionally. You are making a 3D object that you have to think three dimensionally about when you're making it. I want people to engage their 3D thinking when they're doing this. That means like if you need to practice it, I would suggest maybe like making a bunch of circles on a page and then like drawing, then drawing like ovals through them to kind of find you your center lines and stuff, sort of like this. I'm just doing a little freehand Luma side that's not too measured out right now. Just kind of remembering the procedure, just playing loose with it. But I want people to think three-dimensionally about this stuff. That's the big thing. I need I need people to practice this in a way that engages their three-dimensional thinking. Those little uh, drawing tools I gave, like the sketch pad things where you can th turn things around three-dimensionally um, will be really helpful for that. Anyway, I'm going to use this guy now. So let's see, we'll head angle here. So that beard is going to throw people off a bit because it's going to make, make it look like the bottom of his chin is bigger than it is. So just be wary of that. You might want to not include the beer and try to measure the face out. Minus the beard. Like construct a proportionate Loomis head and at the angle that he is at without the beard. Which is kind of close to how you would lay in an actual head. Uh, mind you, what these are what these are called that we're doing right now are Andrew Loomis head lay-ins. Lay-ins are the things that you do before you add details to a drawing. Like it's the scaffolding that you're going to be adding details to. We're making a three-dimensional sculpt in simple shapes that will help you find your uh, 3D landmarks. So it looks to me like his he's kind of looking up a little bit just slightly. So I'm going to maybe like kind of think it like this ish. That means the angle of the jaw is going to be tilted a bit. So it's going to be kind of like this. I'm going to maybe push it a little bit more than how it is in the picture. Just slightly. And of course, I use the angle on the side plane of the head to find my, how the center line drops down from the head. And then I can use the z-axis three-dimensionally to extrude this the measurement for the brow line and find and use the same angle of the of the front of the face. Start measuring out my thirds. One third, one third. This is what I mean like three, thinking three dimensionally. I'm using these tools to kind of help me but you start to develop a sense to it so you can kind of freehand it more. So 
that's the indication of where hit the bottom of his nose would be. Let's get this in here maybe a bit more. All right, now let's yoink. I'm gonna yoink him in here. Maybe see how much different I got from, like I know it's gonna be a different angle than what I got, but I was kind of playing off it to try an upwards tilt a little bit. So mine's a little bit more, mine's considerably more pushed than this, but it does look, whoops, does look to me like there is a slight upwards tilt going on. Maybe I should break down how it looks. Let's see. And maybe I'm going to need to rotate this a little bit. Yeah, there's actually, oh, no, I think I need to bring it up in size. Okay. It should definitely be bigger. It's getting there. Oops. How do we tell where they're facing? Huh? How do we tell where they're facing? Well, you kind of have to gauge it. Um, you can draw over it and try to find what the center line is and uh, the side planes of the head are. So let's see what I got wrong and what I got right. I thought the whole... Um, this is pretty close, I'd say. What's that? I thought the whole point of this piece of the practice is to see how close you can get by just looking at it well yeah so you're, you're, you're using the head angles on here to as riff as best you can uh, and to try and maybe like compare it to what you think you saw versus uh, what it actually is like what I'm doing right now I'm kind of seeing some interesting things like this guy actually had his like it looks like this guy was raising one of his eyebrows but I'm also seeing that his eye line is kind of like this right here, which is a little odd. Well, his nose just seems to be going like this. So there might Maybe be something weird going on here. Huh? Maybe you got uh, hit with a shovel. Or maybe I rotated it wrong. Here, like, let me see here. There are bits and pieces that might be kind of working, but uh, I'm going to do a draw over real quick of his head. I mean, I got pretty close. I got fairly close, I'd say. That's his eye line. That's his brow line. Let's put that over here. Let's put that over here. Maybe even further out than that. The center line is a little bit more like this. been any uh help? let's see let's 
Does anyone have any questions? Any more questions? Can, uh, someone asked, if, I, I don't know if it's a troll question or not, if they can ask, they can submit hentai drawings? No. I'm just gonna leave it at that, okay? We do use art nudes to practice, but we won't use them on stream. The ear angle is probably more like this, actually. Anyway, that's as far along as I got in that study. As I want to go, I think. Another profile view. This guy is looking down slightly. Let's see if there's anything special going on here. I think it's pretty close to, to uh, pretty close to perfect profile. Close enough that I could just make a perfect profile at least head of it. I mean, just as long as it's a angling slightly down. When is the homework due? The homework is due next week. I would suggest as part of the home as part of your practicing the homework, I don't want you to try to I'm wanting you to try taking multiple stabs at the homework. I want you to try Okay, I didn't do so good on this pass on it. I'm gonna try another set of five of these. Okay, I didn't do so good at this pass on it. I'm gonna try another set of five of these. Keep keep doing it and keep measuring out measuring it out until you get a nice a nice workable, believable set of five Loomis heads in those positions that I in, that I indicated of the full turnaround. Yeah, I'm gonna be uploading these to YouTube to answer Spudser's question in the Discord. So maybe going through a little bit quicker on this one. I'm not gonna be as concerned with accuracy on this one. I kind of just want to get like the overall impression of the head. So something closer to what I would do in a head quick sketch session. I'll be working through the tools of quick. I'm having you basically do these tools that we're going to be using for head drawing and also for head quick sketch in the future. But you gotta do the tools in slow motion in order to understand them first. And you gotta repeat them to memorize them. Because head quick sketch only works if you have the tools that you're going to use memorized so that they're intuitive and you're just practicing them over and over again. And then it's about trying to capture unusual angles that the model gives you. Got three minutes left. I'm gonna use it to put some more details in here. I guess hat. And he's got kind of a longer nose, so maybe like this. Longer nose and his likeness, he's got lips that are kind of pulled back and really thin. A 
the features I'm putting on this guy are kind of a preview of stuff we're going to cover later. More, you can dip your toes in it. You can try observation drawing. But again, what you need to concentrate on right now is walking through the procedure of getting those dimensional Loomis heads and understanding them three dimensionally. Like I want you to keep repeating them until you're blue in the face. I mean, there's no shortcut to this. You need to understand how to draw these three dimensionally and you don't develop that unless you practice them over and over again. Because you're going to have a very bad time if you try moving into more details of the face without understanding the procedure and being able to summon it up from, from memory. It should be intuitive and second nature, so even when you get a little bit of out of practice in it, it's still kind of there. And then you just refresh it again to practice again, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I'm doing a live refreshment of my head drawing procedure with all of you. So this will not be the first time that any of you, if this is uh, your first time doing this, that you will be practicing this. You will be practicing this lots for years. You'll be going back to the basics over and over and over again. There we go. I'm starting to get something that's like closer to a likeness of his work. Still very simplified. So this guy, he's kind of deceptive. It looks like the top of his head is smaller than the lower half, going kind of by the eye line. So I'm just going to use his head as a angle point of reference to make a proportionate Loomis head. He is actually uh, looking at a, an up, up angle and you can see kind of the bottom of his chin. So this is gonna be a tricky one. You might want to use some 3D reference from Sketchfab to kind of work out this if you're a little bit lost as to how to handle the underside of the chin. Oh, that's not right. So this eye angle is more like this ish. So you're going to use one of the cheat sheets real quick because I can't get the exact angle that he has. I actually think I got some wrong here.
And so I don't mean to scare people, but if you want to really digest this, you're going to have to do lots and lots of Loomis heads this week. Lots. If you're having trouble with this, or if you're new to this, I would actually maybe even skip out on my concept design class. Or, you know, you can sit in on this concept design class, but while the concept design class is, is being done, um, you want to be keep doing your Loomis heads while you're kind of vibing and stuff. In fact, I'll actually be giving us some fodder to, in Wednesday's concept design class where we'll be actually doing some master studies, somewhat kind of like this, but more concept designer oriented. We'll be breaking down some master work by some master illustrators and concept designers to kind of learn from. And it will use some of the same procedural tools as this. But I can't stress enough, if you want to get good, you've got to put in a lot of hours. And you've got to be drawing lots every day. Like practicing these procedures, reading drawing manuals, you've got to go above and beyond anything I'm teaching in here. Like this, what I'm t telling you here can't be your main source of learning. Look at the Proco videos, maybe look into, look into investing your time and money into drawing courses from a drawing school with a good reputation. and. Uh, good instructors. This can be your secret weapon and your introduction to uh, what we're doing here to what you do in more advanced ways in the future. Like if you want to, I um, mean like feel free to dip your toes in it if you're new to this and stuff. But you really, really, if you want to take it seriously, you've really got to take the plunge. You've got to really think about it. Try it out more. Try to develop a sense of stamina and pace yourself on doing this and concentrate. And put in the effort and mileage. That's what I'm trying to do with these classes. You are literally seeing me putting in my mileage right here. I'm mean, putting more mileage in today later when we're going to be doing the figure workshop at 7.30 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. We'll be doing longer poses and a lot of them will be head portraits. We'll mix it up with some figures too. That's going to be focused on head portraits that will utilize uh, that will give people the opportunity to utilize the Loomis approach. I'm really enjoying this, by the way, because head drawing is something I very much enjoy, and it's also the foundation of everything else I draw. Everything else I draw on the human figure. The reason why we're going to be focusing so much on the human on the head for the next few weeks is quite simple. You use the he use the head to measure everything else in a figure. You can't draw a good figure unless you have a good grasp on the head. That that's just how it is. If your head and its proportions are looking really jacked up, then you're going to have a very bad time when you try to draw a figure. And I guess what. I've been out of head drawing practice. I have been having a very bad time trying to draw proportionate figures. So I've been doing them really sloppy and non-procedurally. I'm still learning by observation, but it's me not breaking it down that way. It's kind of hurt me. So that's why I made the decision to back off to what I know is the core fundamentals 
of good figure drawing, and that starts with head drawing. And I want to get the people here who really take this seriously to the point where we that they can start doing fairly reasonably competent head head quick sketches. It's like a quick sketch is basically you are applying the a shorthand and um, not version of the stuff you would do in longer drawings. Um, they are, a quick sketch is a tool to understand and get more mileage of like almost kind of doing miniaturized shorthand versions of what you would do in a longer drawing. It's a mileage tool. But you need to combine it with longer drawings where you really think through the procedure and memorize it in order to get the value out of it. Pretty close to the end here on the um, this head, so I'm better change it up. All right, we got a straight on view this time. I'm gonna be doing more of these tomorrow, actually. Whoops, failed to save file. Shit, not that error again. I hate that error. I may have to delete some earlier drawings and save a new version of this. So maybe let's delete some of these folders. And I will save a new version of this file. I've got to be a little bit, a little more careful about how huge my file sizes are, to be honest. I tend to work on like way bigger file size than I really need. Shit. Well, I'm gonna have to save it on the Z drive. being really unreasonable right now. Well, that's irritating and disappointing, not being able to save this. Maybe I should delete these. Oops.
Anybody have any idea what's happening with this? Maybe I just need to shrink the whole file size. Yeah. Go on black well it saves a PNG version of that file. At the very least I just want to save what I drew. That I mean that's good enough. Even if I can't save it on the layers I need. Okay, I'm gonna need to make a new file maybe. So we'll close that. Let's maybe drop this file by a good amount, maybe like a 4k file. Out how I'm gonna how I'm gonna stream nude art nudes. Um, mostly when I study art nudes, I do those off off any kind of stream. So now that I've walked through the Loomis procedure several times, I can kind of feel my way through making a cartoon character, kind of like this, using the Loomis measurements a little bit. This one's kind of quicky, sketchy freehand. I've got my hairline here, something like this. I got some better examples when I was practicing a little bit more closer on using head construction for characters. Let me see if I can find a good example. In some of the previous drawings I've done. Here, I know there's one that I got that I can show. I gotta go to Google Photos to show it though.
Here we go. Here's some head drawing practice I did previously of Eric Andre, that one dude from Westworld, and some invented cartoon character heads down below here. But I mean, I'm using the same kind of procedure here. I'm just like exercising more of a sense of like dimensionality and construction to it. And I would want to do more of these in the future, but like think through them even better than I than I had for these, basically. So I'll be kind of working my way back up to doing stuff like this, but much more developed. Maybe like even with some painting and shadow patterns at the very least. We'll skip over this one. Let's find a better one. That one's a good one. Yeah, I use photo reference for these. I stylize this a little bit more. This is a little bit, it's really rough, but it's closer to what Eric, Eric Andre's face that looks like. This one's a little bit stylized sketch. But yeah. And if you start really playing with heads and stuff, like you can kind of just loosely do random stuff like this. Whoops. Like some of my sketchbook things of like messing with kind of weird monster faces and stuff like warping the facial features and so on. I'm For this, I just made the rule of like, I'm just gonna do them all in profile and I'm just gonna mess with distorting, with distorting the heads and adding weird improvised details to them. These are just like sketchbook experiments and stuff. Oh, this is some figure drawing in here. And let me see if there's anything else to share in that. I think there was one, there was a head construction in there somewhere. A head construction sketch. There we go, this is badly measured. There's a lot of problems in it, but uh, I was trying to think through things a little bit more 3D-ish and in simple shapes. Oh, and uh, here's some previous Hans Holbein studies I did. I don't think that one's a Hans one. That might be a Hans one. Oops. Oh yeah. Some of the game grumps and Ross and stuff. I put a letter R in Ross's ear. But yeah. Do lots of studies, do lots of practice, practice the procedure, use your powers of observation. Um, you should try to be bold and try to experiment with like going beyond what I have shown here, but uh, you really, really, really want to memorize the, um, the procedure that I've given you. On that note, I'm gonna participate in this next drawing. We're probably down to our last, like, I want to say two drawings before we break. I mean, we, we, well, not break, but before we end the class. Let me see if there's anything that should keep up with you. So how are you all doing? Did, did you enjoy this? Is it confusing? Is it too much? Great. Uh, it's a little it's odd, but I, but I, all to my own fault, missed a bunch. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you can watch the replay on Twitch later, and uh, I'm going to try to upload this to YouTube as soon as I can. I haven't uploaded the other ones because I've got to, like, delete the copyright strike portions of them, but there shouldn't be any copyright strike portion stuff in this. I mean, Hans Holbein is kind of public domain, and so is, so is Andrew Loomis. Uh, so... Yeah, I'll just find videos of it on YouTube. Or... Yeah, um... Well, and also, like, I would check out the the the, the Proco uh, videos on Loomis Heads. It's got a whole series of, on, like, multiple ones on head drawing for Loomis Heads and demonstrations of the Loomis method and stuff. What we're going to be going over further in, in the future mm -hmm. is an approach to drawing called the Riley method. But we're going to work ourselves up to it because it's going to take some time to kind of digest, but the Riley method is a really kind of rhythmical 
approach to drawing that can be adapted to animation or comics like and uh and internalize as a way to kind of reorient yourself and distort the face and put the faces in any expression you want and uh, the Riley method is all is for faces and it's for figures, but we're starting with the face. And the foundation of the Riley method is understanding the Loomis head, because there's similar construction involved to the Riley method heads as there is to the Loomis head, and the Loomis head is the easiest way to start wrapping your head around understanding heads. Um, and I want to show you, like, if you think this, oh, this is so basic, this is so bare bones, oh, 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 um, uh, I want to just jump right in and make, make really elaborate figures. Well, I turn your attention to this dude, Matt Rhodes, who I've been admiring for a while and taking good looks at his work a lot. Um, if you look at the procedural, the procedure pictures, let's see if we can find one here on his art station page. Actually, no, I'll do this. Open your tab. Zoom in. Oh, what is this right here? Well, he starts with a thumbnail. The next step he does, he does is he does a kind of a rough password as well as, oh, what are these? Look at that. Those are Loomis heads. How about that? And he does them for all of his figures. Not only that, but he uses a construction mannequin for bones. And we're going to be going over that step by step. I want to give people the tools to basically be able to do this um, over the course of doing, uh, over the course of these classes. And the only way you're going to be able to do this, by the way, is if you keep is if you really try to memorize this first step right here. Because if you notice, he does those rough and loose because he has a good understanding of uh, how those heads work from just doing thousands and thousands of them. Uh, and he's able to work them up from those mannequins into these more musculature, volumetric, anatomical figures and stuff. And then he's able to hang clothes off them because he understands how the clothes would hang off those muscles that he created. So if you think this, this is a great example of the importance of procedure. He does this for everything. He starts with the line of action. He creates the head. And he works his way down this little mannequin figures to pose out the characters. You know, for, and some of them he doesn't use a mannequin. He uses kind of a quick sketch shorthand like this some of these characters here that he sort of roughed out but then he, he goes back and he works them out some more and he still understands enough of them to work them out but yeah I will post that again in chat it's art director Matt Rhodes but I sincerely hope we eventually get to come to um, maybe visit our discord or even be a guest lecturer sometime I think he'd be jazzed to do that based on what I've seen of the lectures he's given at various places. But yeah, I just wanted to cite him as a good example of how important it is to memorize this procedure. This will be a tool that you can use for the rest of your art career. If you memorize it and you use it constantly in everything you do, when you're, whenever you're drawing heads. There's also an animal version of this, by the way. And you can distort, you will, you will learn how to distort these features into different character faces and to different creatures and so on over time. So you want us to do uh, a forward facing one, three quarters facing yeah, one, the, the homework, side facing homework, one, back the homework facing is... one, and then like a back three quarters facing one, right? Yeah, the f homework is, I'm going to like do a little shorthand version of the homework here. Homework is front, side, back. Can't you just... Uh, three quarter uh, front, like your, three like quarter your, back. Uh, huh? Uh, if, if you put your window uh, live on Discord, there won't be any delay, right? Yeah, but I do it through Twitch because there's a lot of people and uh, 
juggling both Discord and Twitch is a pain in the butt, and also I want to steer people towards my Twitch more often for this stuff. It really depends. Like I, at the workshop tonight, I might just do entirely through Discord. I kind of like improvise depending on the situation, really. So that's the basic homework, and I want you to use measuring lines, like to make sure. What I want you to make sure that the measuring lines line up horizontally to all the features that you're turning around. You're not doing a in perspective view of this, you're doing an orthographic view of it. So the line should match up when the head turns. Like the eye line should match up and everything like that. There shouldn't be any distortions. That'll keep things from being less confusing, from being confusing. Um, so I want you doing that. And in addition to that, I want you to fill up page after page of tons of the Loomis heads over and over again from different angles and stuff. And in addition to that, you can dip your toes into doing observation drawing of features and the head shape, trying to get little bits of likeness and expression. Try to improvise and have fun with it. Try to like find interesting heads to draw. Look at cartoon heads, copy cartoon heads. Um, check out the Pro Stan Proko videos. Uh, cop just like, I want you to strategize about your ways to learn. Talk with other people about things that they're trying to trying tools that they're trying to use to digest this better. Use the SketchUp, the Sketchfab models I suggested and reference those. I want you to get to the point where you have a good handle on this so you can whip it out when you need it. And I also want you to kind of broaden your vision of where this is going a little bit. And I want people to take the initiative on studying things. Like, I'm not just here to be your art cipher you like pours the information into your head and you just absorb it by osmosis. You have to take the initiative for yourself and go way beyond what I'm talking about here if you want to learn this. How can I find you on YouTube? Um, I'll be posting links to the um, YouTubes of these uh, um, lessons in the class recordings later. I'm kind of getting them to put together. But anyway, we're going to be ending the class not too long from now. Uh, so we'll just hold it on this last drawing, I think, for a little bit longer, maybe about five more minutes or so. I'm just gonna freehand a bunch of these Loomis heads and skulls and stuff down here. Um, for more advanced people, if you if you want to get a little bit of he, uh, figure practice, then the week I would suggest maybe like do line of action, get a head on it, and then get maybe like a bean body or boxes for the rib cage and pelvis. I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of that during tonight's figure drawing too, to kind of freshen up my figure drawing. In addition to the head drawing, I'm going to be focusing on. day pretty soon. Let's give it about like three more minutes or so. And then we'll meet up again in the Discord for tonight's three hours of figure and head drawing. We'll be favoring longer poses kind of like this. And the way I want to run those kind of workshops now is I want people to talk more. Because I want people to get to know each other and to talk about, and I want people to like confer and talk about things they're struggling with, talk about things they're observing in, in the um, model that they're seeing, the model that they're trying to draw. 
I want more participation during the workshops. So there might be times when we do need to kind of be quiet and, and concentrate, and I'll call those out or something. But I do want the workshop, the workshops that we have in the evenings to be much more social. So, so anyway, this is probably the time I should uh, solicit Twitch Prime subs. If you got any Twitch Prime subs that you haven't used yet, you can toss them my way for a few extra bucks if you like what I'm doing. And uh, or if you're just going to use do a regular sub, you can do that too, or gift subs to other people. Every little bit of uh, donation money counts. I also have a PayPal link and a coffee link down below for tips for what I'm doing. Ethan was in here earlier asking about the donation link. I don't know what where he's going to be pushing that just yet. I don't know what he, if he said he's going to be putting that in a video or something. It kind of sounded like he was, but I'm not sure what, what that's going to entail. Or if he was just talking about maybe doing a shout out or something. I don't know. I'll have to ask him later, maybe. I'm going to take a peep. So make sure you try to do a really, really well thought out. I want I want the Loomis heads that you do to look as good as like 3D models. In fact, if you need to trace over the 3D models to kind of get a sense of them, feel free to. But uh, you should be able to understand it enough to be able to create them from the five poses by hand. So keep trying and repeating them over and over again until you start to really wrap your head around. Rowdy, uh, those ref that planar reference head looks pretty good that you had that you posted i'm not too sure about that skull that skull's like a little distorted but i need to really get a good look at it from other angles to make a judgment on whether that one's a good tool to study with but the planar head that you had there looked really good in that photo so we're going to call it very shortly I just want to draw one more head maybe before we do forward to seeing you do hundreds and hundreds of Loomis heads over and over again until you are blue in the face with this and you have it totally memorized and then of course you will just keep doing it as your foundation for other thing other heads you draw and that you build on top of it this is a scaffolding to orient yourself all right so uh, we're gonna cop it we're gonna stop it uh, the um, the fig and uh, someone asked in the Discord, when does the figure drawing workshop start? That starts at 7 p.m. Pacific time, so that'll be an hour and a half from now. Specific time? Pacific time.
Congratulations. 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 Uh, thank you all.